if nothing else, COVID-19 this past year should have shown you that these teachers unions are rotten. No other way to put it. They're rotten. They're rotten to the core, uh, politically motivated, uh, motivated by things um, aside from seeming to doing doing their job. But um, as I always mention, it, it stems from a core issue with public education system has nothing to do with actually it has a lot to do with funding, just not in the way that you guys think. It's not that they need more of it. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, they need to be eliminated. You see, public education, it, it doesn't even make sense. The concept of public education makes absolutely no sense. It's more ironic idea that uh, whether it be through the federal government or through the state and locals where people's tax money goes to these institutions, right? Um, instead of money being being kept by the parent and they get to decide where their kids go to school. So the, so the, the, the schools are able to compete with each other. Like you think that would be the preferable way to do that. But for whatever reason, no, it's not for whatever reason. It's, it's, you know, a lot of people have a lot of money to, to, to make here and, uh, effectively they are in indoctrination camps. Um, so this is why the state has so much of a, of a control over the, the educational system. The teachers union is a product of that. Um, and it shows you the, the, the issue with that. And I think COVID-19 stuff, it, it exposed it. A lot of you guys that were either unfamiliar with it, or you weren't, you did, weren't knowledgeable on just how bad this was. I can't remember what episode it is. You'd have to go check it out. But Corey DeAngelis, we had did a show with him, very knowledgeable guy on, on this, way more knowledgeable than I am on this subject matter and has a lot of insight. I would revert back to that because we talk a lot of the, the about the teachers unions in that in that episode of Fort Ken and Sec. But the teachers union is a product of that. And, you know, it sounds crazy, but this is the reality. And you saw that, OK, it's time to get back to work and they a lot of them in a lot of areas refused. They just said, we're not going to do it. That's what the teachers union say. So imagine that. And it's still going to get paid. You know, this is how kind of all this works. But imagine that. Imagine that they get to decide. They say, we not going to work. And they still get paid off of that. Whereas to, if that was any other legitimate private sector job, you're done. Like, ain't no, ain't no, oh, you don't want to come to work, bet. You can stay where exactly where you had. As long as you, as long as you like, you just ain't going to get paid by us. <laughs> Good riddance. You know what I'm saying? But here we go again. Excuse me. Back. As uh, this is coming from the Chicago Tribune. Uh, Chicago Teachers Union prepares for possible walkout Wednesday. This would be the day. Walk out Wednesday. I like that. Uh, over reopening plans, high school staffs will refuse to work in person. So they want to still work uh, remote, uh, which, you know, a lot of places have not been doing that. They've been uh, like, in, you know, spots in Texas and everything where they're doing, you know, back to kind of normalcy, uh, at least in, in person, in person, you know, not doing all of this bull crap. So here we are. Some of that stuff may be coming with masks and stuff, which I still think is torture. Uh, nonetheless, Chicago teachers union you members could refuse to report to high schools starting Wednesday, which will be today, if they still don't have an have a deal with the school district for reopening high schools. Chicago Public Schools um, has identified as a CPS has identified April nineteenth as a target date to reopen. Oh, so that's next Wednesday. Am I am I am I wrong? No, that's Mon Monday. What? The, what? All right, whatever. Let's continue. And require high school employees to begin working in person Monday. Ah, I got you. High school students in, in general education programs are the last group left to resume in-person learning. But once again, conflict between the CPS and the CTU, the Chicago Teachers Union, is causing uncertainty about when that will happen after the union last week called for a one week delay because <laughs> that a lot changes in a week guys of the uh, high school reopening district and city officials indicated that they have no intention on pushing the date the fact that y'all were able to get away with this up through april is insane anyway in an emergency meeting sunday of the ctu 700 member elected house of delegates voted that all members assigned to high schools will work remotely starting wednesday unless there is adequate movement at the bargaining table. Like they think this is a negotiation and your kids that y'all, why ever, whatever reason y'all dropped them off at these indoctrination camps, but your kids 
your kids are the ones that 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 are being played with, right? The CTU uh, uh, CPS bargaining union vice president Stacy Davis Gates told members in a video update after negotiations Monday afternoon said they told us what what they can't do. But she said the union is continuing to advocate for an agreement. We are pushing for our demands to be met. Demands, man. Uh, we are going to remain hopeful. The table will loosen up and they will meet us halfway. If we still need to walk out, we have prepared to refuse, says Johnson. Interesting. CTU President Jesse Sharkey noted the rising number of cases. Oh, my God. Here they go with this. And positivity rates in the city. Cases, guys. All the cases. The cases. Lack of availability of vaccines to those 16 and over. Why would a 16-year-old? Why? Are y'all really giving vaccines to y'all's kids for this? I'm, I'm like, I, 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 this is news to me. Are y'all seriously giving y'all's kids vaccines for COVID-19? Like y'all are actually doing that for your teenagers, like the like least vulnerable population. Are y'all seriously do it? CTU lawyer Thad Goodchild it said CPS position is that schools couldn't keep Pfizer vaccines, the only kind of approved uh, for ages 16 and 17, extreme cold temperatures necessary to research. How about they don't take them? H how about you don't don't take them? They're, they're, they don't need them, okay? They, they don't need them. Why are you giving vaccines to like the literal least least vulnerable population after successfully opening elementary schools earlier this year they say successfully as if it was like a, a task this year we are eager to provide our high school students with the same opportunity for in-person learning. this is uh what the cps said while our discussion with the chicago teachers and unions are ongoing we remain fully committed to welcoming back all interested high school students on april 19th so 19th is uh when they would do their thing so I'm guessing they're talking about next Wednesday would be the one the walkout would happen. Okay, now it makes sense. So there's some numbers about the COVID percentages because they're scared of COVID and, and reasons, reasons. Re Look, guys. You want to take an ax to the teachers union because I know a lot of people have teachers. You know, they, they're starting to see the issue with the teachers union. They're not just the politics, but just the fact that they get to just, you know, do whatever it is they get to do. A lot of this weird negotiation stuff between their look. Take an act at the system itself, and I mean the public education system. It has long been rotten. It has long been needed to be abol abolished, not not revised, not money rerouted because they get plenty uh, per pupil. I believe the United States of America. I believe it's like number one, if I'm not mistaken. It's up there. Um, in terms of per pupil, how much you they they, they spend, um, but obviously the money is going to administration uh, efforts and stuff like that. That doesn't change. It needs to be eliminated. But even if it if it didn't if it somehow did change, the problem still remains, and that is that the money does not follow the kid, and that's been the problem with the public education system in general and that you are basically <clears throat> enforced definitely by way of where you live to go to a specific school and you do not if that school is rotten to the core even if you're willing to drive down the street and and even if a school will be willing to accept you it's illegal for that to be basically a case because you don't there's not a, a real market for for education even like when it comes to private schools they're largely based on not just the curriculum of, of the public education system, but how they handle their economics is largely, but you don't have a freer market, right? The, the private schools are at a severe disadvantage because of it. This is why they need to be eliminated because even if you don't have kids, you still get taxed to pay for it. But nonetheless, there's a fundamental problem with that and, and that the teachers unions are just that manifested Right. Why do you think they get to just say we just not going to do it? 
When again, if you put that in any other private sector job, if that was your approach, you would be out of a job. You would not be, you would not have, a, imagine going to your job and saying, hey, I'm not showing up because I'm mad. That job is going to say, okay, you can stay where you're at. <laughs> By all means, if that's if that's the route that you want to go, you can stay exactly where you're at. You just don't got to get you're not you're no longer employed with us. That's how it works. When they're playing with money that ain't theirs, see, it works a lot different. But the education system in, in, in its concept makes no sense whatsoever it hasn't but a lot of stuff has been exposed the politics that are being played have been exposed this past year why you got people like you know was the the the, the california teachers unions the scum of the school district uh out there were trying to have money money uh they're demanding that certain political and social preferences be be funded and stuff like that the reason why that is an issue why that can even be a thing is because of how the, their their jobs their paychecks uh come about and it's not a voluntary exchange by way of teacher student to the to the institution it's institution gets paid regardless that's a fundamental problem you just watched a clip from my podcast for canon sake Catch us live at 12 p.m. throughout the week over at youtube.com slash youngripper59 and follow us over at odyssey.com slash at youngripper59. If you want to watch the entire video cast after the show is over, just be sure to become a member on the YouTube channel. Of course, the full audio portion of the podcast is available for free on all major digital platforms or just visit forcanonsake.com.